Well, you can't really just say that, you know. First of all, you say that was Pimp's favorite song. Right. What? How do you know that? Uh, I was riding in the car with him on the way to Houston from Port Arthur, and he told me once I asked him. Oh, you asked him? You like, what, what's your favorite song? Yeah, and he said Diamonds Up Against the Wood, you know. <clears throat> I don't know, you know, I don't know why, but, you know. That's a hard song, man. man I'm and you know I'm looking tight. These jealous niggas looking at me in my car so shot. That's one of the hardest songs. That's a hard song. Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. 101. Yeah, we gonna talk. Say, listen, man, I don't have to even go there. I'm very excited today. I'm, I don't even have to go there, but I'm gonna go there anyway, man. This guy right here, man, is one of the main guys that you're gonna see on Boss Talk 101. As long as I'm doing this, I rock with him. We have a lot of conversations, man. We season it with God. There's a lot of stuff that we talk about that's really deeper than, you know, just doing a podcast and I think that's right. where we going with ours you know what I'm saying right. my boy Smoke D is in the building What's up, stop man? playing man welcome stop to playing. hey you stop at the playing. spot now alright man I'm glad to be here bro. thank you <laughs> for having me man just good to see you again man like I said last Same time here. we was together we were down in Shreveport man right, right and man I had a great time down there man with Fiend and everybody man, ain't no doubt man you know you know you're in that video right yeah I know I'm in the video I <laughs> Type of Seen the video, man. I don't know where you, where you at. She wasn't I, in it. I been in It was not me. She really was it. He was even Trill Talk wasn't in it. It was more just me and them. You know the main. You know it was really it wasn't purposely done. Yeah. You know what I'm saying. We gonna get y'all in the next one. Yeah, Charlie okay. to his head not at home. <laughs> I'm good. Yeah. I'm she good. Don't care. <laughs> <laughs> but man. yeah, man, the, the the single like I'm surprised, bro. You know, like I guess. What made me think about doing the single, like, you know, living with Pimp C for like, you know, that amount of time and learning music from him, it was like the anniversary, you know, of one of the albums. And I was sitting there thinking, and you know me, I don't be needing no hugs. I don't like to cry and do all that stuff. I just, I'm a human doing. So I said, let me make a song and see if I can Pimp C it out. So we, we did the um, Can't Get Enough, you know, and... It's like really my rendition of Diamonds Up Against the Wood because that was Pimp's favorite song. Yeah, 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 yeah. You listen to it the way it's structured. And so, surprisingly, man, um, yeah. Well, you can't really just say that. You know, first of all, you say that was Pimp's favorite song. Right. What? How do you know that? Uh, I was riding in the car with him on the way to Houston from Port Arthur, and he told me once I asked him. Oh, you asked him? you like, what, what's your favorite song? Yeah, and he said diamonds up against the wood, you know. <clears throat> I don't know, you know, I don't know why, but, you know. That's a is. hard song, man. man I'm down and you know I'm looking tight. These jealous niggas looking at me in my car so shot. That's one of the hardest songs. That's a hard song. I'm, I'm mm -hmm. being real. That's that's probably one of the ones that I listen to a lot. Diamonds up against the wood, uh, High Life. I'm tired of living fucked up, tired of living bad, tired of here, grandma mama tell me when you gonna go to church, Chad, now try uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you the truth, like, next to Scarface, that man cry, the greasy fire, like, that's my, no, that's, that's my number one, but like, the diamonds of, that's, that's number two, like my all time, all time. All time? All time. Wow. So, yeah, so, yeah, I never seen a man too. cry until I seen oh, a man, man. I, So, on. you like that tiny desk that, that Scarface did? He greets his father with his hands out. Rehabilitate his slang. Glad to be the man's child. Man, I like Scarface, period. No, but I'm just saying, we hadn't heard Did you nothing watch from it? him. Did you watch well, his desk? I, I watched it. I don't get into watching stuff too much. I watched a little bit of it to see the significance of what they were trying to convey, and I, I really liked it. But more so, for me, it was just to see him do that song in another space and in another light, but then to know you know, what it meant to me driving in the car, swinging and banging through the streets of Jackson, Mississippi. Like, that song impacted the ghetto where I'm from, to me, in a, in a, in a, in a, in a, in a major way. Wow. So, so you, 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 you gotta think about it, man. That was, that was in the early, that was in the early 90s mm -hmm. when that came out. From the diary, right? Yeah, yeah, from the diary. Mm -hmm. um, like, and, and during that time, you know, when you look at the early '90s, that would that we we didn't we didn't have a lot of choices in the South, really. 
It wasn't a lot, a lot of music like that. I would say it was a lot of underground music. A lot of underground, but nothing like now. Meaning it was you, you, you had, you knew you had Master P. If you body body, we say you body body. I represent where them kidneys hang. Third wall. Right. 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 You, I mean, Master P was underground long, long a long time. A long time. That's and right. Like, we started hearing about him. We thought he was from California. Yeah. We didn't know he was from, like, Louisiana. We just liked it because it was, you know, we thought it was a California dude that had a southern swing to it. We found out he was from Louisiana, you know, later. You know? Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Were you even down there when, when, when they first linked with UGK or you wasn't there at that time? No, I was on vacation. Okay, okay, okay. And I know I know how that is. Like, yeah. so, basically... Um, I interviewed uh, Silk and he talked about it a little bit. No, no, you did your thing. So I'm just can change, nigga. I think not, cause I be on the same block. Like, like, when, do you remember like what was going down during that time? Cause that was a long time ago, man. Um, I do, but I remember just being in the streets trying to trying to figure it out. Um, life was crazy, so we were just trying to, I guess. And when they, when they came, I was I kind of respected them and liked them a lot. So that was dope that we got together and did it. Yeah, know? yeah. yeah. I interviewed uh, Boz. And Boz talked. Big Boz talked about it uh, about you know doing that mm -hmm. with uh, UGK. You know what I mean? Right. When they was when they was young, how right. excited it was when right. they first did that group that body right. of work. And, and, and even with the, um, I don't know. I was like I said, I was on vacation. They had some idiosyncrasies between the two cliques, like back in the day. Yeah. And so for like. The video that we just dropped can't get enough to see Bun and Fiend and Brace is like the Cadillac and the Tank. You know, it's like it's like a, a union of sorts and a semblance of way of a way through suggestive reason and then the psychology of it all for the ones that know. That's real. That makes sense. Too. That make a lot of sense. Right. And, and we need that type of stuff to show that the bridge right. has been. You know, what I mean? right yeah, 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 yeah. That the gaps is there's bridges in yeah, those gaps right, right. now. And, 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 and there are not still walls up, but these are, right. these are places where right. we've learned to walk over and really, Man, like, it, it comes from actually, like, being, you know, time heals, too. And you get older, man. You know, you change. Right. We, we Brother, you and I, we in a death season. We should be preparing our children for our death. That's real. And we should be coming together to do it. Like, we, we ask for stuff that's already ours in these societies or whatever when it's us that need to help us. Wow. You know, we got children that's going to grow up in a world that we won't exist in. And for us to exist beyond our existence here, we have to impart stuff into them, kind of like a life after death, so you will, so if you will, like through the generations, because that's what's happening now. Generations haven't been able to communicate from generation to generation. There's been psychological dysfunction, conditional you know, things that they do to us, disease engineering, social engineering, all these things cause us to divide us from each other, but mainly from ourselves. Wow, I agree. So. I agree 100%. Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. 101. Yeah, we gonna talk.